we bow our heads and we say a prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, as we meditate on your word here today, pray that by your spirit and by your word, you would strengthen us, make us wise, Lord God. Use us for your kingdom uh, to carry out your word. your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My brothers, my sisters, so he was passive-aggressive and not just slightly passive-aggressive, but aggressively passive-aggressive. To the point where I had no idea how to interact with him. He, uh, everything I did, I seemed to do wrong, even when I think that it was exactly what he wanted. Are you with me on that? And I just grew tired of dealing with I began to lose patience. I began to be frustrated. I began to not care. It's not a good thing, right? But the more that I tried to deal with this other person, the more frustrating and difficult it became to the point where I'm pretty sure that my Christ-like demeanor was not so Christ-like anymore. How do you deal with with someone who just seems determined to make everything difficult. How do you deal with someone who, who everyone is happy and in agreement, and yet they find some reason to cause a controversy and divide and split and cause issues? What do you deal? How do you deal with the person who just flies off the handle and you're not even sure why? All they are is difficult. They make life difficult. They make choices difficult. They make working together difficult. How do you... What would God have us do? Like I said at the beginning of the service, we're, we're looking at a series of uh, accounts from the Bible of people who go through the same things that you and I go through on a regular basis. And today, we're going to meet someone who dealt with not just one difficult person, but two difficult people and got stuck in the middle of them. And how did the Lord God use her? And then we're going to look at some other passages that maybe give us some advice on how it is that we can deal with difficult people in difficult situations in the way that God would have us do it. And the person we're going to meet is named Abigail. The Bible speaks very highly of Abigail. And she's married. He's self-centered. He's arrogant. He's a fool. And this is Abigail's husband. So she has to deal with this guy on a regular basis. Now Nabal, God had blessed Nabal. He was a wealthy man. He had lots of sheep. And he was living out in the, in the southern Judea, I think it was. Right? And the King at the time was King Saul, and Saul wasn't doing a very good job as king to the point where God had said, I'm not going to put your son on the throne, I'm going to put David on the throne. Saul hated David, wanted to kill David, David ran for his life, and he ended up down by Nabal in southern Judea, and he and his soldiers sort of protected the people in the area from bandits and robbers and other people like that, um, because Saul wasn't really doing his job of protecting his people. So David did. And one of the people that David protected was Nabal and Abigail and all of their shepherds and all of their flocks. And as long as was David was down there with all of his soldiers, nothing ever happened to any of Nabal's thing. Nobody came in and stole the sheep. Nobody came in and, and harassed his shepherds. Everything was calm. Everything was at peace. 
And so it was expected that when it came time to shear the sheep and the money was coming in, that Nabal would somehow help David something. He gave him some men and said, hey, we're hungry. Can we have some food? And Nabal lived up to his. All my watching over this fellow's property in the wilderness so that nothing of his was missing. He has paid me back evil for good. May God deal with David, be it ever so severely, if by morning I leave alive, if I leave alive one male of all who belong to him. When Abigail saw David, she quickly got off her donkey, bowed down before David with her face to the ground. She fell at his feet and said, Pardon your servant, my Lord, and let me speak to you. Hear what your servant has to say. Please pay no attention, my lord, to that wicked man, Nabal. He is just like his name. His name means fool, and folly goes with him. And as for me, your servant, I did not see the men my lord sent. And now, my lord, as surely as the Lord your God lives and as you live, since the Lord has kept you from bloodshed and from avenging you, yourself with your own hands, may your enemies and all who are intent on harming my lord be like Nabal. And let this gift which your servant has brought to my Lord be given to the men who follow me. Please forgive your servant's presumption. The Lord your God will certainly make a lasting dynasty for my Lord because you fight the Lord's battle. Otherwise, as surely as the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, who has kept me from harming you, if you have demeanor as she goes into this difficult situation filled with difficult people. Calm. What's that? Calm. Calm. Humble. Humble. Brave. Brave. Wise. 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 I think gracious too, right? You see the grace in there? Did Mabel deserve what Abigail did? Not one bit. Not one bit. Nabal, Nabal was a fool. And yet out of love for her husband, she went and she stood before David and stopped angry David, who was filled with wrath, and even, doesn't say it very well in the translation that we read, even seems to take the blame for what Nabal did. I'm going to read to you from, from the other, another translation of that same section. It says there, the first thing that, that Abigail says in the translation we read says, pardon me, right? Listen to what it says here. When Abigail saw David, she quickly got off her donkey and bowed down before David with her face to the ground. She fell at his feet and said, My Lord, let the blame be on, on me alone. So here's Abigail. She takes the blame for what Nabal did. Had grace and love for her husband who did not deserve it and took the blame on herself 
and, and, and stood before the wrath of David. Humbled herself, right? To do it. David and, and Nabal were the ones who were out there going crazy, and she's the one who stood in the middle and humbled herself uh, to deal with this whole thing. Who does that sound like? Sounds just like Jesus, doesn't it? Here are you and I talk about difficult people. All of us. When we stand before the Lord God Almighty, we are difficult as can be. He is the holy, righteous judge. He is the maker of all things. He's wiser than all. He loves us more. And he says, this is how you should be. This is the loving, right thing for you to do. And what do you and I do? I'm going to take matters into my own hands and live my life my way because I know better and I'm smarter. I'm going to hold my grudges. I'm going to worry and stress. I'm going to bend the truth to suit what I want. I'm going to live my life on my terms. Talk about difficult people. Because of our sin, our difficulty, we fall under the wrath of the Almighty God. And yet Jesus Christ stands before the wrath of God and says, let their sins, let the blame be on me. Pour out your wrath on me, Father, and do not hold their sins against them. He humbled himself to stand in the gap between us and the angry God to become one of us and bear our sins. Why? Because he had grace for you and me. He had love for you and me, though we had deserved how much of it. None. All Abigail was doing was reflecting the heart of her God. Deal with difficult people. God difficult people. And he was deal with it after his own heart. To reflect in our lives the very same way that he deals with you and me who can be so very difficult. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Love for us, though we didn't deserve it. Humility. To the point of even taking some of the blame. It's hard. Someone is difficult. Someone starts to stir up trouble. Someone starts to do different things. We like to get our dander up, right? Get our defenses up and we're going to let them have it and show them where they're wrong and make sure that they know that I'm right. Or maybe we like to turn and run. Just avoid the situation altogether. But neither one of those really reflect how our God operates or how our God dealt with us, do they? I know that there is wisdom sometimes when there is someone who is difficult Someone who is hard to handle of just, of, you know, maybe I'm not going to be so close to them because all they ever do is cause problems. The Bible talks about it, right? Warn a divisive person once, warn them a second time after that, have nothing to do with them. But there is, and so there is some wisdom in that. But God puts us in situations with different people, with difficult people in difficult situations, not to turn tail and run all the time, but so that we can help and be a blessing. Notice what David said to Abigail. Who, do, who sent Abigail that day to stand between David and Nabal? God did. God put Abigail right there to deal with that situation. And sometimes God puts difficult people in our path, in our life, not for us to turn tail and run, but so that God can use us to be a blessing to them and reflect his love, his patience, his grace in our life, in our interaction with them. You with me? And getting our dander up and our defenses up, that's not Christ either. Christ dealt with us in patience. Christ dealt with us in forgiveness and in love. As difficult as we are, as difficult as we can be, God never lost his temper, never got himself wound up, but daily works with you and me in love and patience and understanding and forgiveness. And in our interaction with our brothers and sisters in Christ, I think that is how God would have us deal with them. 
after his own heart. Why? Why, why, why deal with it? Doesn't make it just, you know, just a headache. I got enough going on. How many of you have extra stress to spare? <laughs> Nobody does, right? Nobody. But you know why, right? It's because God loves them just as much as he loves you. And as God has loved you, we love one another. They are forgiven by the blood of Christ as you are forgiven by the blood of Christ. And in my, as I understand how much God loves me, and I say, Lord God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for blessing me. How, Lord God, can I thank you? And what does God say back? Love your fellow men. In the same way that I have loved you. So why? God loved me. As difficult as I am. Abigail was a peacemaker. Jesus says that in the Beatitudes, right? Blessed are the peaker, peace, peacemakers because for they shall be called, not for them, for they shall be called children of God. To make peace. To bring calm smooth over, bring unity. That's what God would have us do when we come in contact with a difficult situation with difficult people. No, no, no. Is to be a peacemaker. Jesus was the ultimate peacemaker. When you, are peace, when you and I are peacemakers after his own, after him, right? Here's one more thought for you. You take any single one of us. Well, there's a few strange people in the world who are never difficult. I've met a couple of them. They're amazingly smiley. And no matter what happens, they're, they're, they're able to deal with whatever it is. But most of us, normal human beings, if you put us in it's the wrong situation at the wrong time with the wrong people, every single one of us, what? Can be pretty difficult. And I would hope that when my day comes to be difficult that the Lord God would send an Abigail filled with grace and calmness and wisdom and bravery and, and, and love and forgiveness just like he did with David to help me through my difficultness and I would hope that someday if I ever come into contact with a difficult person that I would be just like Abigail filled with that grace and that humility and that patience just like Jesus, the way that he dealt with people. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Amen? Amen. Let's follow that. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your Son to bring peace between us and you, for making us one with him. Lord God, we thank you for that. Pray, Lord God, that in our lives that we would reflect your love, your peacemaking in the way that we interact with one another. When we become difficult, Lord God, help us to remember that we are at peace with you and are to live at peace with one another. When we, when you make us an Abigail, sent to bring peace to others, pray, Lord God, that you would make us wise like her, loving and humble like her, forgiving and, and, and loving like your son, Lord God. Use us to bring peace to a world that is divided, and angry, and difficult. In Jesus' name. We continue by bringing our offerings to the Lord. No, we're going to sing a song. <clears throat> Let's stand and join.